Hi, I'm a junior engineer with around a year and a half experience. And today I'm going to talk about how I found my first job with a CS degree and no internships. So I know it's a lot more difficult to find a job in this job market, but I hope this video can help provide some insight on how hard it was for me around two years ago in 2021. So I'm going to provide some info about what college I went to first. I went to community college and then I transferred to UC Irvine as a computer science major. I've honestly never really liked school that much because I felt like I had to take a lot of classes that I really don't care about, which are like all the GE classes, all the math classes, all the computer science classes. So pretty much like every class. I've always wanted to build an app that I can use. So during the summer, I learned iOS development using Udemy. I built a random restaurant finder using Yelp API, and I was able to go to random restaurants around me. I thought it was pretty cool, so I deployed it on the App Store, but I took it down after a year because it takes around $99. So after I built this app, I decided that I would be able to show it at the career fair. A few months later, there was a career fair, which I thought wouldn't be too bad because I had this app that I was able to show to the recruiters, but it did not go that well. So I would show them my app and they thought it was really cool, but the problem was they would always ask me for my GPA because I decided to just leave it out of my resume because it wasn't that high. And all of those companies wanted at least a 3.0, and I had a 2.9 at the time, so I got immediately rejected. The only company that even gave me a phone interview was BlackBerry. And I didn't even know that they existed at the time. But anyways, it was my first phone interview and I had no idea what I was doing. So I completely bombed it. But I always tell myself that I didn't want to work at BlackBerry anyway. So after this experience at the career fair, I decided that I did not really want to look for jobs anymore. I wanted to wait until I graduated because I really just felt hopeless. And then COVID hit, so all the classes became remote. And then I guess it was much easier to not think about it. So I graduated in June 2021 and I started applying to jobs, but then I quickly realized that it was really going to be not that easy again. All of the requirements on the job listings were a lot more than what I had on my resume. So I knew I had to create some projects or some portfolio website to make my resume stronger. So the specialization I chose was front end development with React. So I ended up choosing front end development with React because it was really popular at that time. But also I did a senior project with React and I really liked working with it. It's also really easy to showcase front-end projects in a portfolio, and there are just so many resources available for you to learn online. So with this in mind, I ended up setting a three-month goal for me to find my job. I had a lot of confidence that I'd be able to find a job as long as I kept working on it, and I never gave up. So my mindset was more like when I'll be able to find a job rather than if. And the thing is, the longer you go without having a job after graduating, the worse it looks and the harder it gets. So I knew I was on a timeline to be able to find a job as quickly as possible. I'm gonna talk a little bit about my routine after graduating. I used to play a bunch of games, but I completely stopped playing games so I could focus on this. I hid all my distractions. I put my phone on the side so I wouldn't be able to reach it and closed all of my distracting apps like Discord so I wouldn't be able to see the messages. So I would pretty much spend every day working on projects, learning front-end development and applying. Some websites that I used to apply to jobs were Handshake, LinkedIn, ZipRecruiter, and indeed. And I would rank them in that order with Handshake being the number one. I knew I needed to have a good foundation, so I decided to learn HTML, CSS, and JavaScript from the ground up using Free Code Camp. And then after that, I used the Odin project to learn full stack development. To learn more about JavaScript specific questions, I used the MDM docs. And then I always use Google or YouTube whenever I got stuck or had any questions that I needed to be answered. But I guess now you can just use ChatGPT and it's probably much easier. And I would always spend the last two hours of my day doing leak code because I knew that a lot of the big companies would ask leak code questions. But in the end, it didn't really matter because I ended up working at a startup. And they didn't use LeetCode for their interview process. So in the first month, I built a website with my friend. And all I can remember is that the code was really bad. I think I had a file with around a thousand lines of code. Yeah, I had no idea what I was doing. But at least I was trying to improve. And I had some phone interviews from time to time, but they would always say I wouldn't have enough experience. So I don't know. At the end of the first month, I actually got an offer for a full stack developer at a startup. The salary was 30K and that's not it. They also said I had to work nights and weekends, which was not it either. So because I valued myself a lot more than that, I decided to not take it. And it's 30K a year in California which is basically poverty level. So by the second month, I was pretty much done going through Free Code Camp and Doden Project. I've always picked out the things that I wanted to do, so I would skip through a lot of it. And so in this month, I decided that I needed to create a portfolio project and create a full stack project on my own. 
and I decided to use the Mern stack. I followed a bunch of YouTube tutorials and I was able to create my own projects. And also in this month, I had no notable callbacks except for one company in Irvine. So it was a biotech company and they decided to give me a shot because I was a UCI grad and I had nothing on the job description on my resume. So I've been pretty much just shotgunning applications. So I didn't really even know what companies I applied to. It was a technical onsite interview. And during the technical interview, they gave me two LeetCode easies. So I was basically able to ace the interview because I'd been doing LeetCode for a long time. And I thought I had it in the bag at that time. So after that, they showed me around the lab and I wasn't really paying that much attention because I thought I already got the job. And they didn't really say it was going to be a test. They were just showing me around the lab. But after that, they started questioning me on what I learned after looking around the lab. But honestly, I wasn't really paying that much attention because I don't really care that much about the biotech aspect of this job. So I literally just said, I don't know, because I didn't want to lie. Um, yeah, I didn't even try to make anything up. And from there, I could tell that their expression changed and I got rejected. But it's fine. I didn't really want to work there anyway. I would have taken it if they offered it. By the third month, I already finished my portfolio project and my sneaker e-commerce site. So mostly throughout this month, I was just applying and working on polishing some other projects. I was getting past the resume screening a lot more because of my projects, which made me really happy because it felt like the work that I put in was actually worth it. And in this month, I ended up getting two offers from two really small companies. So both of them actually found my portfolio website on my job application. So I'll talk a little bit about the first company, which I didn't choose. It was a really small insurance company, which was around 20 minutes away from where I lived. There would have been only three engineers, including me. So I felt like that was probably not a good place for me to learn. And also I really wanted to work with React and front-end development. I think the tech stack that I would have had to work on was back-end with C-sharp. Also their interview process was non-technical. It was more of a behavioral interview and there was only one interview. So yeah, I was kind of confused on how I even got the offer because it felt like it was too easy. I ended up going on site to their company and seeing how it was and it looked legit. So the company I ended up choosing was a company in the Bay Area. And one of the reasons I chose them is because I get to work with React and I'd be hired as a front end developer. I also wanted to try living in the Bay Area because I've never lived there before. And I thought it'd be a good experience to just try something new. I ended up leaving after like eight months, but I could tell you guys why in a different video. Welcome to my portfolio website. So this is the website that I built when I was looking for my first job. As you can tell, I have not updated this in a while. I think the landing page of the portfolio is the most important part because that's initially what the recruiter sees. So they're just gonna judge you based on how this looks. And I think this looks pretty simple and clean. I'll start by going through a little bit of my projects. So the first project is the sneaker e-commerce website. I created this using the Mern stack. I also added Google and Facebook OAuth so it would be easier to log in. And the sneakers could also be checked out using Stripe API. So let's go to the live website, which I already know doesn't work. I deployed this on Heroku and they told me that I should update many times and it never updated it. So yeah, it looks like it does not work. All I have to show for this is just this image. Oops. The next project I have is front end mentor. This is pretty useful if you wanna be a front end developer. I totally forgot to talk about this earlier in the video. Frontend Mentor is a website that gives you the design and the images. So you can try to recreate that website using those mocks. All I did were the easiest ones, which were newbie and junior. The next project I have is my anime website. This was a website I made when I was looking for my second job. I kind of just did it for fun and I only spent around a month on it. Yeah, I guess this doesn't really have any relevance to this video, but I guess I'll just show it off. So the next website I'll talk about is this TFT stats website. This was a website earlier where I was talking about how I wrote 1000 lines of code in a single file. I ran into so many bugs that I never really wanted to deploy this. So it's kind of just here, it just exists. And I don't even know why I put the GitHub link cause I'm pretty sure if an employer even tries to look at that, they would definitely not hire me. And now we get to the about me section. I'm just gonna skip through this about me section. There's no way the employers ever read this. They've never talked to me about this. So I honestly, would not put too much effort into the about me section. Next is the contact me section, which recruiters have never used. I built the functionality for this, but it looks like it's as useless as the about me section. I never received even one email. Um, so yeah, that's about it for my portfolio. Let me go back to the top. Oh, also this for some reason doesn't work. Well, I mean, it works, but I guess it looks really ugly. I don't really know what happened. So yeah, that's pretty much it for my portfolio. Thanks for watching. I hope this was somewhat helpful. Bye-bye.